our first headline comes from NBC Sports, and it's a rumor. Celtics, Blazers, potential trade destinations for Mavericks center Andrew Bogut. Is this news? Oh, baby, this is definitely news for all three parties potentially involved. Okay. For the Celtics, it would shore up their defense. They're struggling. Defensive rebounding, they're towards the bottom. Second chance points for opponents, they're towards the bottom. For the Blazers, he'd set some mean picks for that guard-centric sure. offense and also shore up their defense. And for the Mavs as well, if they trade away Andrew Bogut, that's saying to Dirk Nowitzki, who's turning 39 after this season, that, hmm, this is it. I mean, basically, we're going younger and we're, and we're giving it up. So I think it's... A big deal for all three involved if they were to trade. He's an impact player. We saw that in the finals last year when he went down, even though I know Draymond Green got suspended. The Warriors really missed him on the defensive end, rebounding, turning away shots, just setting screens for Steph and Clay. So that's exactly what these type of teams you mentioned Portland could definitely use for, for CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard setting screens and just helping out defensively. And also for Andrew Bogut, because he's in the final year of his contract right now, he wants to showcase teams that he can still be an important player in the league. Yeah, he's still a young guy. Yeah, yeah, he's not going to do that on the Mavericks, who are very, very unlikely to make the playoffs this season. So he wants to sort of showcase his talents coming into a free agency season. Say, hey, look, I can still be an important player and still has a big role to play on someone's team. You, you could see why it makes sense for both of those teams, Blazers and Celtics. They could use a piece like him. What would it take, though, I'm curious from you guys, to get a guy like Andrew Bogut? Is it as simple as like a first-round pick? Somewhere no. 15 I think higher? It's more, I, or you think it's it, more? It, yeah. If you For look, a guy that's injured right now and has had injury concerns over the last couple of years? More. Yeah. Well, I mean, the last three years, I think that's a bit overblown. The last three years, he's averaged 68 games. That's yeah. 14 games missed. It's not that bad. It's a little bit overblown. And rental prices for guys, mm. this could potentially just be a rental for, you know, six months. Sure. It's gone up. The price has gone up. Look at, like, Aaron Aflalo. Yeah. You know, the Blazers Young got pieces, him. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot given up. I don't know. I so, mean, like, I, a pick? You would have to imagine a pick would be involved. I haven't traded. I think and then a, and yeah. maybe a young talent. Then, I think yeah. Mark Cuban's saying at minimum he wants at least a first-round pick from someone coming back. That obviously then starts a rebuild process for yeah. the Mavericks. Yeah. But, uh, again, Andrew Boger, because of the impact we know he can have, don't look at the box score to see his impact on the game. Teams don't, you, you know, he's not the sort of guy who's going to have a big double-double, lots of blocks and things like that. His impact is felt elsewhere. But teams just know what he sets defensively. He brings that huge presence there. And, again, Boston brought in Al Horford. He's been injured, he's missed a few games, but he hasn't been the rebounding presence they wanted him for. If he can slide over maybe to the four, freeze up his game, plonk Bogut in the middle, it really changes things for the Celtics. Well, you look with the Hawks, what Al Horford wasn't able to do defensively on the rebounding. Mm. He couldn't. I mean, that's not his forte. It's not what right. he does. They brought in Tiago Splitter. They tried other things. Al Horford is a four who's yeah. masqueraded in a five-man's body. He's playing alongside Amir Johnson, who's just not a, a defensive rim protector. Andrew Bogut would be exactly what they need and, you know, could propel them to that defense that we thought coming into the season we're penciling them in second, third place. Mm. Could they rival at least yeah. the Toronto Raptors? They, they haven't been that. I'm with you guys. I think it's news. I don't think this trade's going to happen in the next week or so, but I really could see, especially with the Mavs struggling 5-17, and 17, the worst in the league right now, in the new year, why not? The yeah. idea, especially with his contract situation, as you said there, Lee, shipping this guy out. So we agree. It's news.